right, and hello everyone, and welcome to the very first session of Mass Effect Icarus. For the new and or curious viewers, this is a Mass Effect 5th edition game, which means that we are running on the base game of Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition with a Mass Effect skin and flavor applied to it. And if you're interested in learning more about Mass Effect 5th edition, uh, one of my mods can drop you the links to that in chat. Uh, before we begin, I do want to say a few things. As we're all new to uh, Mass Effect 5th Edition, some of us even to Mass Effect and even 5th Edition in general, uh, we are likely to get some things wrong. All I ask is that you be civil in your corrections. Aside from that, I would just like to say that uh, whatever support you can provide for the stream, whether it's a follow, sub, donation, bits, patron, or really any form of support, uh, even if it's that uh, just talking in chat, it's all greatly appreciated. But uh, not a whole lot of fanfare to be had here, so we're just going to go ahead and run the intro. Welcome back, everyone. As the intro just said, the year is 2183. The Council is seeking out new specters to fill the void that has been left in the wake of the Battle of the Citadel and the loss of Commander Shepard. To this end, they have contacted each of your characters. You have been told that you are specter candidates and that you will be brought together for sort of a quote-unquote group interview. What that meant became abundantly clear when a Systems Alliance destroyer, the SSV Leonidas, picked you up from wherever you happen to be in the galaxy. It seems you're not alone. There are five other candidates sharing the space that has been allocated to you aboard the SSV Leonidas. And we go to interior shot. So the space that has been allocated to you is about the size, uh, to use a Mass Effect 1 reference, it's about the size that the quote-unquote bottom floor of the Normandy had, where it is a space that could conceivably fit a Mako in it, um, but in general it is a recreation, training, and uh, sleeping quarters type arrangement. Uh, it is a open area. Uh, there are what appears to be a pantry in the corner, uh, maybe even a full kitchen of sorts, uh, there's, of course, a, uh, a refresher of all variety. And uh, what really matters is your characters here. So why don't we start with uh, Baziz. And first things, uh, correct me if I'm saying your name wrong, uh, but if you could just briefly introduce your characters as I throw them on. So yeah, let's uh, start with our Asari friend. Uh, still trying to figure out who my character is, and I think she's trying to figure out who she is as well. She's an Asari. She's been kind of drifting through life as still in her maiden phase. Figure out what she wants to be, aspiring to be like a just or a actress or something else. And so, despite this like talent, she's naturally biotic. Obviously, Cole is a candidate for uh, for the Spectre. She's not uh, shooting people in the face with her mind. She's probably spending time playing with the. Uh, the shot, whatever Mako vehicle there is. Okay. And uh, next up is our Corian friend. So if you can introduce yourself. Junan Naram Nacham, the token didn't update for some reason. Uh, in a, a very thin, lithe uh, Corian with the suit that's instead of the classic glass or uh, see-through faceplate has a more uh what seems to be more battle uh, ready kind of helmet visor on and the suits all the suits all together is very technological uh 
wires and such running around, running along it. She is technically on her pilgrimage, but if you were to ask her, she'd probably tell you more about her situation. Okay. Up next, a interesting fellow, uh, Mr. Oron. So Oron is a Batarian, uh, four four eyes, sleek dome head. Uh, he is currently wearing uh, council issued uh, medium armor that he has painted red. Um, a sort of an actinic tin tingle around his uh, overall body indicates that he is a biotic of some me measure. Uh, he is carrying a well-revered, well-used large monoblade axe and a standard issue katana shotgun that looks like it's just he keeps it around as an afterthought. And he pretty much just stares at the rest of you with a bit of contempt in his eyes, taking you in as his potential uh, rivals at this stage. All right. And now we have what probably is going to be my favorite character. Uh, Bishop, if you can introduce, uh, is it Penagalon? Penangalan. Penangalan. Who uh, probably comes in from a different door than the one everyone else is coming in, because uh, apart from anything else, he's wearing a fairly beefy set of heavy armor, and although he, although he doesn't have the weapons installed at the moment, the shoulder mounts are present. And he's like a large, lumbering, quadrupedal alien. Like, imagine an elephant with the face missing and gorilla knuckles instead of pads. Alrighty. And then and last, sort of like, last come, comes in and just sort of looks around at the others. Formal welcome. Hello. And then takes his place. And then last but not least, we have Mr. Thorin. So, Thorin, as you can see, is a Turian. Um, he's a little bit different than the typical Turians. Uh, he is slightly taller. He stands about 6'9", and he's also a little wider. He uh, seems to have more of a build on him than the typical scrawnier Turians that everyone's used to seeing. Um, he has white face paint uh, above the uh, eyes and below the eyes and along the nose and the mouth. Um, and he also has... Uh, one blue round pupil eye and one amber slit eye. Uh, his that's his right eye, and he's just holding a sniper. It's in his collapse form as he's just checking and he's walking and looking at everyone. The uh, he has an insignia on the on a, one of his breastplates there, uh, showing that he is part of the forty third uh, Turian Marine Division, and he starts looking at the Asari. You, uh, biotic, right? Oh, oh yes. Uh, are you biotic, too? No, but what division are you with? Oh, uh, I haven't really settled in that yet. I've been kind of bouncing around, trying different things. Oh, so we haven't run any tactic train, then, have we? No. No? All right. I've run some missions with a few Cabal groups and a few Asari commandos. Interesting watching you guys work. Yes, the uh, commandos are very effective. Both you know, guns, mines, their bodies. So I've trained a little bit in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but it is not, not my specialty. Mm. You are sniper rifle? Yeah, scout slash marksman. It's always hard to tell when it collapses. Well, this one is good for compact maneuvering. Not great in close quarters, but that's why I have uh, this, and you just pat his side there, pat his back, and be a rifle that's collapsed on his back. So your close weapon is a rifle? Phased him. Yeah. Well, I'm always much more of a fan of a good old pistol, but 
suppose a rifle will do. You just need to spray a whole lot of bullets. Probably. Well, they took all my good stuff before I came aboard, so I had to settle down with some new bot material. Was it grenades? You look like a grenade person. <laughs> no, I'm the type that uh, you're going to wonder why your leg's missing and you're never going to see me type. Oh, Mild bloody. curiosity. I wonder how long they're going to keep us here. Um, if this is a la if this is going to be a last man standing, you better be certain I will give it my best. Let us hope it does not come to that. Hello, I am yes. Junan Ramnachayam. Please just call me Jun. Right, suit rat. It, has there been a Batari Spectre before? Nope. I was quite surprised when they tracked me down. I'm quite surprised they let a slaver on board an alliance vessel at all. Former slaver, thank you very much. Yeah, it looks like uh, they're really skipping a bomb of the barrel for you. So, so what do you, you bring to the table other than um, easy access servants? I keep no slaves any further. Thank you kindly. I bring, and I pat a ver uh, fairly large bladed axe on the back of, of my, uh, slung over my back. I am apparently one of the few of you who are brave enough to stare an enemy face to face in close quarters combat. Oh, you bring an axe. To Curse him. rebuttal. There's no sense in being dead. Haven't been dead yet. Juna, Juna slinks up uh, towards Oron and uh, just gets close, and then uh, right in front of him, her, um, her Omni tool appears on her arm as a blade just shunks out of it right in his face. I believe I handle myself quite nicely. The next time you put that, the next time you draw your blade, it had better be an actual attack because I will be striking back. And I physically push you back. Oh, I'm just having some fun. Come on. So am I. Get Thorin out of my gonna... face, suit rat. I'll retract the Omni Blade. Thorne's gonna sit down and just look at everyone. Like, measuring contents has already begun, I see. Of course. If you don't know where you fit within your cast, how else do you know where, how you can improve? Well, if we're measuring things, I think the... Uh... Our friend uh, Penna Gallen might have an advantage. She seems significantly larger than everyone. <laughs> yes. That's what I meant, yeah. Dismiss Elcor, Elcor. It's kind of goes with the species. Elcor are large, but they're notoriously slow. I doubt he'd be effective in men. No Annoyance. Offense. I prefer cautious. Well, you all seem like a fun bunch. My name is Thorin, by the way. Thorin, I'm, um, I'm busy. Someone, I always get the comment that it sounds like an AI or a droid, but my name. Or I'm going to call you B. If or you're talking about being cast, my name is Oron. Like the Pen and Gallon does what you think is probably about it's a little tricky to tell. He just sort of like his front legs just sort of bend out very slightly. All right, so we're all here for spectre training. Do we know anything else? The only I thing I know is my my weapon locker already has my name on it. Saunter over and start putting my gear into it with a uh, hasty uh, bit of haste. Just throwing things in, not much in the way of organization. Hmm. I know they're they're desperate for specters since the attack on the, the... so almost said it all by that rogue specter. 
I mean, they, they might take more than one of us. I don't think we, we need to view this as a competition. So Thorin, how does it feel to have the greatest Turian representative on the council go rogue? That must chafe. Not really. Oh, really? No. He didn't admit to what he'd done, and he decided to lie about it. The moment he did that, he isn't great at all. That's the thing with us, Tarion. We own up to our mistakes. And you forget there is a Turian council member, so it's not like it really matters much. Of course they're going to get another Turian spec. That is true. Well, well. Actually, Spotterus was the one that approached me. And Spotterus is the Turian council member? Yes. Well, Turians are known for their nepotism. And Batarians are known for uh, capturing and slaving and selling off people. Only because they were too weak to properly defend themselves. Seriously, if they can't defend themselves, it's like they are putting up a big neon sign that says free labor. So I can see the four of us becoming the Spectre program. You... I can see you washing out. Mm. Or being disavowed within the first month. If I wash out, I'm taking you with me. <laughs> you won't see me. Well, let, let's not um, discount the possibility of uh, someone of his reputation being very useful as a fact. He'd be easy to disavow and easy to send on machines so that other, other one of us might stand out. Yes. If doing anything in a black market, I mean, the uh, famed mm. Korean ranger might attract undue attention. Yeah. Penangalan sort of walks over a little towards Juno and says, observation. I'm thinking the idea that we're supposed to fight each other to the death is sounding a lot more plausible now. I'm going to go to my locker, open up my bag, and I'm going to pull out a busted up Batarian goblet. And I'm putting it into my locker and then everything else in my bag. Long suffering. Oh, here we go. I hope that isn't the case. It would be. It's probably not. It'd be dumb to just waste candidates on each other. We're most likely getting a mission into either the Attican Traverse or Terminus systems. That's my assumption, anyway. No, I think they wouldn't put us in something like that. Especially if we're all going to be working together. They're probably going to give us something easy. We're probably going to go against some... false operative that's undercover, playing a role, and then we will carry out our mission, and then we'll be evaluating how we do. I don't think they're going to put us into any real situations that can be politically damaging for the Citadel. And almost like a higher power heard you, uh, there is a chime at the door, uh, followed by, at least in a very rapid fashion, followed by a human commander stepping in. Uh, this individual you would know as Exo Jensen. Uh, he's very distinguishable based on his impressive beard. Uh, he does stand at about five foot ten, uh, otherwise standard human male. And as he steps in, he says, ah, good, you all are settling in. Uh, perhaps I should begin the briefing then. And he opens his mouth, and then there's suddenly a chime over the ship's speakers that says, uh, Exo, we're devoiding course. Uh, please consult your nearest terminal. And uh, the Exo says, uh, all right, okay, hold on. And he moves over to one of the terminals in the room, uh, reads a message or two on and says, Okay, new plan. We have a new objective, people. One that's more temporally relevant. Uh, so if you will please join me around the table. And uh, what's unique about this room is that uh, the actual table and chairs that are here uh, recede into the floor, which means that with a press of a button or perhaps an activation of an Omni tool, uh, rising up out of the floor is a metallic table along with enough chairs uh, to handle all of you. I bark in laughter. Ha! Love human ships. So adaptable. 
Ooh, I was gonna say I sit next to uh, Oron. Thank you. I figured it was. Uh, I figured it was. Pat and Gollum basically just sets himself up and stands at the other end of the table. And uh, Jensen just sort of uh, coughs a little bit to break the tension and says, Okay, so here's the situation. Uh, obviously, we are taking you all to the Citadel for a proper briefing, but it seems in the meantime, we've come across a uh, distress signal. Uh, but best we can tell, this is the USV Majesty. And he, he presses a button, and above the tables, there's sort of a holographic view of a Kulun class freighter. And uh, Jensen goes on to say, we don't know why the Majesty is squawking, only that as the closest ship, the Leonidas, will be responding. Uh, again, this is not necessarily part of the original plan, uh, but I will be happy to pass along any and all uh, mission logs to your superiors. Is, it a, is the Majesty a standard alliance ship? Uh, yes, it is a uh, typical Kowoon... Co Loon class freighter, uh, not really that exciting in terms of Starfleet or not Starfleet Starship uh, design. It's pretty much just a tug taking things from point A to point B. Would you allow me to download a copy of the schematics if we're going into it? No, uh, certainly. Bring in my Omni tool and do so. Okay, let's, for over uh, my let's... ship layout, right? That should be mostly open space few hallways chip layouts uh, system locations anything that could help us sure why don't you roll me the first thing in the game why don't we call this a let's call this an in, well, insights more for social let's call this a investigation a investigation or electronics maybe I'll give you investigation And for the first <laughs> roll of the campaign, it's a crit. Very nice. Solid 26. Uh, yeah, what Thorne is saying is true. What you're looking at in terms of floor plan is it's a very open design. Uh, really, the uh, entirety of the main sort of, I guess you would call it a cargo hold, but the entire ship is a cargo hold. It might be more accurate to say that there are rooms just sort of segregated off of the cargo hold rather than to say that there is a specific room for it. Um, what you are able to tell with a crit is that the Majesty was just running between, uh, Novaria and, uh, the council space, but in general, uh, you are about as much in the dark as Jensen is himself. Like, you don't know what to expect or anything of that nature. Yeah, um, the other thing I just mainly want to know is, uh, the location of the systems for the ship. Yeah, and I would say that uh, once we go to that map, I can certainly point those out to you. All right, perfect. Exo Jensen. Uh, any thanks for a moment. Uh, Thorin, right? Yes. Yes. Do we happen to know what the uh, manifest of the cargo of the vessel is hauling? Do we know its flight plan, flight path, where it was, and where it's going? I can answer at least partially, yes. Uh, it was traveling between Novaria and the Citadel. So probably technology from Novario. Corporate where are, secrets. Where are we currently? Uh, we are currently at, and he lists off a set of coordinates. Okay. Uh, can I run some sort of check to see if this possibly could be Terminus Pirates or something along those lines? You certainly could. Uh, why don't we call that a Insight? history check? Okay. A nine. Um. You would know that generally there might be blue suns out this way, but it's not really their domain, as it were. The blue suns are probably more out of the Skillian Verge than this location. But as with all mercenary groups, they can literally just show up wherever. If we're dealing with a regular, with a regularized or with a militarized pirate fleet, expect. Blue suns are the highest pro probability. You and assume should... that it's an external threat. If it's traveling from Novaria, it's most likely corporate secrets, meaning cargo could have escaped. Yes, That's yes, we all know. 
uh, the crew is incredibly sick or computer viruses cut their systems. There's no reason to believe that. If there's it no is... reason to believe anything until we actually get eyes on the mission, I'm currently speculating and planning possible responses. Well, I'd like to assume that since it's Novaria, they have their own security force. This vessel is probably equipped with some decent defenses, or at least some decent weaponry. So, extra caution when boarding. Yeah, so we... I guess, I suppose it's a option to present everyone here if we feel like hailing them, sending a message to the vessel to let them know we're coming in case the original crew are still alive so they don't shoot us. But doing so obviously also means that it's possible we alert the people who've taken over the ship that we are coming. I recommend surprise. Swoop in, uh, stay undetected for as long as possible. If it turns out that they are is an external threat, we stand the best chance of catching them unawares. It turns out it's an internal threat. That's not going to affect us. Uh, not going to affect this situation any other way. We also have to understand that we're not specters. We don't have authority. No, we don't. Yet. Isn't this part of our... This is not part of our training, but logs are going to be made available. So I'm treating this as a specter in training mission. If, if this falls outside your precious parameters, that's up to you. Oh no, it's fine. When, uh... When Oren's talking about how it's not part of the mission, Beezy's going to be looking at Jensen's face to see if he's, like, got to tell, see if this is part of a Now that would be an insight. <laughs> yeah, if he's got to tell, his tell is either that he has no tell, or he is just telling the truth, he's not it's... hiding anything. With a beard like that, he's a poker player. Probably. It's the I'd full say... I'd say we do a misdirect. We launch the shuttle with us on it. We go and dock, and at the same time, the larger vessel comes in, does the standard hailing, makes sure everything's fine, and while they're busy, if anyone is on the ship, talking to the Dreadnought here, they won't be noticing us. Yes, do, does this vessel carry two shuttles? Yes, the um, Leonidas is equipped with more than a few UT-47s. We could do a split infiltration. And it's right about then that uh, there's another chime over the speakers that says, XO, we are coming within range of the Majesty. And the XO says, all right, well, I guess this is your call since I technically don't have authority over you, but apparently I'm your mission liaison for this. Uh, what's the plan? Do you want to go in uh, UT-47? Do you want us to dock? What's what's the play here? Inform me when deci decision is made. I will go equip my weapons. Pan and Garns has like turns to go leave because it takes about 10 minutes to install weapons on the shoulder mounts. kind of just want to watch him do that because I've never seen an Elcor do something like that, but mission comes first. I, I'm always a fan of my shuttle battle. <laughs> Thank you. I still so haven't I'm figured out how they do it either. Taking it off, like a uh, taking off so quietly while the the main ship draws their sensors, flipping in the back. That what's going. On. Yeah, I think it's a better idea just to misdirect. Plus, if anything were to happen, it's, it's only a small shuttle that's docked with them, not the dreadnought. Dreadnought can open fire. <laughs> Does the it is, uh, biological it's contained? Yeah. Does, uh, does the Majesty have weapons? Well, if I look over the schematics, no. As a uh, freighter, it does not have even. Uh, it doesn't even have defensive weaponry. It is just a freighter. Okay. It doesn't have any weapons, so having this ship show itself would only serve the scare it away. It would not be any fun. I vote we just all hop in the shuttle and stealthily answer from there fine i'm fine with the shuttle but misdirect would be good jensen sort of nods and says very well we will be on standby to reveal ourselves at your discretion well i'll set up a link with the ship and uh 
I guess the code word would be um, go. Hmm. I always love that uh, Turian optimism. I'm sure we'll be fine. All right, folks. Well, you know the mission. Let's see how this turns out. And then we have a uh, sort of a montage suit up sequence as uh, Penangalan gets his stuff on. The rest of you, you know, check out your gear, get your armor on, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, what follows is the uh, Leonidas. We sort of cut to an exterior shot where the uh, Leonidas is flying towards the uh, Majesty. And the Majesty itself is a fairly boring vessel in comparison to the Leonidas. Uh, more specifically, that uh, as a freighter, it is just almost like a flattened cylinder with engines and a little nub at the top, which is where the bridge is. Whereas the uh, Leonidas is almost like a, um, again, to use a Mass Effect reference, it's almost like the Cerberus symbol. Uh, if you were to cut out part of the middle and uh, leave it almost like a letter H uh, with a cannon at sort of the bridge between the uh, two poles. Um, but uh, as you... Uh, fly a little bit closer, we see a little drop ship sort of come out of the Leonidas and begin flying towards the Majesty. Now, all of you would notice that as you get within visual range uh, in the shuttle is that there are currently three other uh, shuttles docked with the Majesty. Um, they do not bear any markings that would indicate their allegiance and you're also not picking up the signs of any larger craft like the Leonidas in the area. Um, but uh, before you dock, is there anything that anyone would like to say or do? Oh, yes. I would very much like to say how right I appear to be. It is indeed an external threat. So we have established that much. And my concern is now is where do these guys come from and where is their ship? Yes. Could be laying wait in an asteroid field or parked on a common trade route or by a, uh, a nearest. Well, like, where, where is the Majesty sort of in terms of space? Like, is it an interstellar space? Is it orbiting a planet? Uh, it is just an interstellar space. Uh, it's maybe about two days' travel out from an actual, like, uh, gate. Uh, but it is pretty much just in the void at the moment. Uh, I will radio or I'll contact uh, the Leonidas saying there may, the main ship that the pirates came from is still around. Keep an eye out. Roger that away, team. We will be on the lookout. I'd also advise us going dark for a little bit. They don't. I don't need them triangling the Leonidas or us. Uh, by the way, what's the max capacity on the shuttles? Um, I would say that there's probably there's room probably for one room. more, but since Scotty isn't here, his character just isn't out of cold sleep yet. So, yet. so. I'm, just, I'm, I'm wondering how cramped it is with an Elcor and full battle gear on on it. Probably pretty cramped. No, no it, it works out math wise. The Elcor counts as like 1.5, but I'm a tiny Corian and I count as 0.5. So it's. Do, do we want to take two shuttles? Too late now. Mm -hmm. so, so, so I'd imagine June is sort of like slightly uncomfortably squeezed up next to next to Penn and Garland. Then. I'm a Cory and I'm used to tight spaces. Juno, how good are you at hacking? I would dare say that I'm an expert. It is the main reason why I'm. We might not be able. No, oh, sorry. It's the main reason why I'm considered for Spectre training. My knowledge of code and technology. Alright. Then I want you to lock down as many of those vessels as you can. Prevent them from leaving. And just override the docking clamps. If um, we can get one at least, we can investigate who exactly it is and where it came from. I'll have to find the terminal on the vessel, but I'll do what I can. And... I still want to exercise caution when boarding, because if there was any security force from Novaria keeping these people safe, a bunch of dumb pirates now have their weapons. 
And I'm going to look to Oren as I say that. You want to know something about dumb pirates? They don't live long. The smart ones do. Well, you're still young, aren't you? I've actually entered my my midlife. Oh, that's sad. How long before long we Long suffering here? stress. Can we save this for after the mission? I agree with the elephants. The chicken started it. Irritation. Elcor. No. Chicken. Bird. And I point to Thorin. Chicken is a... Dock. Chicken is a... What, you know what? Not here. So, I, I do a very important question to answer your question. Uh, who's flying right now? It's yeah, well, a... We all just, as one synchronized <laughs> turn to look at the pilot seat, which is empty. <laughs> Since the uh, space I mentioned, Thorne would be piloting, and BZ would be, like, co-pilot. Well, whoever is uh, doing the piloting, I need a vehicle handling, please. Okay. Uh, BZ, what's your vehicle handling? Uh, that'd be, well, uh, six in total. Well, I, I'm, I'm, giving, I'm assisting, so I guess I'm giving you. So I'll actually have, how about you be the pilot? I'll be the assist. Okay. Because I have a five. Okay, and uh, if I remember my 5e correctly with the assist, that means he is rolling with advantage. Correct. Which means a total of a 16. Uh, with a 16, you are able to dock uh, in such a manner that does not give away the Leonidas' uh, vector. And I can put us on this big old map, which I will adjust for the stream in a moment. Uh, now, it is worth noting that uh, you all should be able to see bottom right, and I'll shift mm -hmm. ping, hopefully to bring you all over. Um, but uh, if you cannot see for any reason, please let me know. Uh, stream, I will be adjusting the map uh, as I remember to. Um, but for the moment, you all dock, and there's sort of a, a whoosh of air as the airlock begins to pressurize with the uh, in interior atmosphere of the... Uh, majesty. Now it's key to note that you have not opened the door yet, so if there's anything you want to do before actually boarding the vessel, now would be the time. Uh, air, um, what's the air quality? The air quality is, uh, well, that's, uh, that's a good question. Why don't we have you roll a science, please? Ooh, I'm good at science. Uh, there it is. 16. Uh, with a 16, you are able to establish it is a breathable atmosphere. Uh, it's maybe a little bit stuffy, maybe a little bit humid. Uh, but for the most part, it should be breathable. No problems there. Fine by me. I will draw my Viper, my Viper sniper rifle and ready it. I better put the, the face mask on anyway, just in case they start using gas or the hole does get punctured. Axes out, lads. Oh, only me? Okay. Sounds like you should go first. As I push my way to the front, for once, you and I are in agreement. And yeah, feel free to move your tokens around as you would like. Uh, the actual door is uh, up to the north. Uh, right now, you guys are just in the back of the shuttle. So it's actually this door up yonder. Is <clears> there? <throat> no. Yeah. Um, so this might become relevant, GM. Mm -hmm. um, most of my credits went into a, a mod for my shotgun, mm -hmm. which was the... Uh, where was it? I had it written down. Uh, it was the combat sensor modification, okay. which basically alerts me to any nearby enemies and I cannot be surprised. Uh, what is the range on that? I think it's, I want to say 15 meters. Let me check. Because that will flavor what I tell you next. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Combat sensor. 10 meters. 10 meters. All right. With uh, 10 meters, you are able to at least confirm that there's no one waiting for you in the airlock. Uh, however, on the immediate other side of the airlock, there are approximately uh, six individuals that, or or at least something biotic, 
or not biotic, but uh, organic. Organic. That's the word I want. Something organic moving around. Right. Six organics, other side of the airlock. Yep. Panangalan sort of moves forward and gets ready to sort of breach the door. Yeah. I shall go. F I'll head up to the front and I will make, I'll do the standard closed. Close palm, extend five, four, three, two, one. And then hit the open button on the airlock. All right. And immediately when you open, uh, several things happen at once. The first, there's a slight whoosh of air as the pressure equalizes fully. Uh, the second thing that happens is that the uh, Batarian that is sort of waiting on the other side, leaning up against the wall, sort of jumps with the start and says, Whoa, wh who the hell are you? And uh, the next thing that happens is that they immediately uh, go for their weapon. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and jump into our first combat. Um, right. Now, right. if I remember correctly, if you select your token and you push the initiative button, it should automatically add you. Yes, it does. Very good. So um, I roll initiative with, my, with uh, advantage. So... I will be uh, add to combat. Uh, I'll be doing the same thing because uh, I roll initiative with disadvantage for being an elk off. So I'll roll and then roll again separately. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm having trouble adding myself. How do I do that? Right click? Uh, you would just left click your token that it's selected. And then on your character sheet, you would push the initiative button. Ah. Oh, oh that's pretty oh, decent. That. 15. Okay. Okay, I will take the 12. Sticking with the 12. And apparently it didn't add you, but I can add you manually. It's no big deal. All right. And then we get to see what uh, these lovely individuals are rolling for their initiative. Survey says they have rolled a 2. So they're not going anywhere fast. All right. So sort of initiative. So, uh, Juna, you are up first. Uh, you do not have a clear line of sight on the individual on the other side of Iran. But you might be able to get a shot off. They would just have uh, probably hard cover. Uh, instead, I will... Um, I mean, yeah, there's not a lot of room yet, but I'll use my action. Because I, I can still see him just barely, right? Uh, I was referring to this one here. Oh, okay. Uh, the one that is around the corner here. I, unfortunately, I can't, you know, shield his name from bleeding through the... The, yeah. uh, the dynamic lighting. Um, but, uh, yeah, as far as you know, this guy doesn't exist to you. Oh, okay. <clears throat> then, uh, I'll get, I'll just, uh, move up a bit to get out of everyone's way. Uh, well, first I'll use my, I don't know, I'll just move up a bit to get out of everyone's way, and then, uh, Hold my action to hold my action to uh, hit someone if they get close. They try and rush us. Okay, Pen and Gallen, what is your action here in combat? All right, first he's gonna sort of shoulder past Oron and barge over to here, and then. Seeing there's only the one Legionnaire there at the moment, uh, he is going to just sort of get there, turn around, and open fire with the assault rifle. Okay. Uh, before you do that, go ahead and roll me a perception, please. You shall do. Or would a passive yeah. perception be a better... Um, I think active um, I think perception active would be best here. Okay. That's a four. All right, so what I'm going to say is out of character, you do not notice this, uh, but if you are to look sort of down to the south, there is another there Legionnaire. Is. Um, so unfortunately, you do not notice them before you open fire. So yeah, first attack roll of the game. Go ahead and uh, right, let's see what happens. Let's see, what happens. let's see if I've hooked this up correctly. That's a 19. A 19 is more than sufficient to hit them. Only does three damage. Only does three damage. So you uh, open fire 
uh, and the bullets, such as they are, sort of ping off of the Legionnaire's shields. And is there anything else you would like to do? Because unfortunately, his shields are still operational. Hmm. Uh, well, I only got the one action, so no, he is going to just hunker down there. Alrighty. Up next, Oran, what do you have going on? Um, Oran is going to move up in front, so point, just step through the door, mm -hmm. um, take up, try to take up his entire attention, and then I am going to do a point blank attack with my shotgun. Okay. Okay, and so because my shotgun has the hip fire, I do not get disadvantage when firing within two meters. So I just roll straight attack. Mm -hmm. Oh, this button here. Unfortunately, a not six is not going to get you anywhere. Oh. So almost comically, you step around the corner, uh, pull out your katana, fire, and uh, somehow, even though you're point blank, you have missed him completely. Cash rock. All right. Uh, do you want to move anymore? Or are you going to stay there? Oh, I'm perfectly fine where I am. Noted. Thorin, you have seen this comedy of errors. What is your action? Okay. I'm going to one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to move up here. And I'm just going to pull out that mantis. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do steady aim. And that gives me see here steady aim very nice ignores half and three quarters cover alrighty and yeah I'm going to take a shot right right at his throat okay yeah 13 is just enough to hit uh, and since I have an ally next to him sneak attack all right. Uh, you need to roll damage for your mantis as well. Oh, yes, I do. So a total of 16. So. Uh, oh, no, there's actually more because I did steady aim. Oh, you're right. Uh, so that's 19. 19. All right. So uh, where were you aiming in particular? Throat. Well, and sort of a uh, eerie uh, bit of uh, irony especially for those who may have watched Cerberus yesterday. Uh, <laughs> you pull out your mantis, you aim, you open fire, and not only do you pierce the shields of this legionnaire, but you fire with such force and such ferocity that uh, you give him what was an emergency tracheotomy if the tracheotomy was performed by someone using a less than elegant weapon. By that I mean you literally sever his head from his body, and he is donezo. And then, yeah, up next, uh, BZ, you have heard at least all of this. <laughs> oh, cool. I can get to a spot where I can see anyone. Yeah, uh, all you're seeing is that uh, sort of there's a blood splatter uh, around the corner from you, but you're not able to see any other foes at the moment. Oh, a Batarian. Who's a slaver? I am stunned. Uh, I miss I'm going to grab some like heavy, uh, grab some like not tools the time. or something like that nearby me and as I walk and get ready to, if anyone comes rushing or uh, gets anyone acts hostile. I use my throw ability. Alrighty. No one listen to what I say. There's five more of these bastards. And yeah, I'll give you a uh, a general reference. So uh, to your northeast, or sorry, northwest, there are two. There's one on the immediate side of the wall from Penangalan, and then there are two to the southwest. Actually, I can kind of see that one. Yeah. I don't see but yeah, uh, with BZ's turns over, it is the Legionnaire's turn. And what the Legionnaires are going to do is uh, the one just around the corner from Penangalan is going to shout, Grenade! And they are going to throw in a Inferno Grenade that will affect all of you. 
So I need every single one of you to please roll me a dexterity saving throw. The DC on this is 13. Okay. Agree. Well, I'm around the corner. Does that provide any bonus? Uh, yes, I will give you uh, advantage uh, since you are behind cover. Nope, thank God. <laughs> All right, 18. All right, just need one from Thorin, it looks like. All right, so uh, Thorin, Juna, and uh, Oren, you are going to take half damage here. Uh, but as the grenade explodes, it is going to do a grand total of uh, only six fire. Uh, so that's three to Oren, uh, Thorin, and uh, Juna. Uh, but everyone else, you're going to take six, which I believe knocks out your shields, and it does at least one point of health damage. Remember, your shields come before your health here. And uh, if you're using your token, the blue bar is your shields. What's the yellow? Uh, the yellow is your AC. So yeah, the uh, grenade gets thrown in. There's an explosion of fire. Uh, persistent fire, I might add. In fact, I will draw that here on the map. But uh, most of you weather it just fine. It's not a huge deal, as it were. But you are currently standing in fire, so you might want to fix that. Mm. And uh, the other Legionnaire, at least the one that Penn and Gollin can see, uh, they are going to open fire themselves. So uh, the Legionnaire uh, opens fire. Survey says, with a 24, he is indeed going to hit you. Uh, for grand total uh, for, of oh, go ahead. Hang on a second. Uh, as a reaction, mm -hmm. going to use my weapon master ability. Okay. And okay. Uh, roll a d8 to add that much to my AC for okay. one attack. Okay. Could be very important here. So my armor class goes up to twenty-four, which still hits. Yeah, unfortunately, still However, hits. However, I will take half damage. Alrighty, so yeah, uh, there is a shot uh, from a Vindicator shotgun. I think it's a shotgun anyway. Um, or no, it's an assault rifle. As an assault rifle barks and just sort of waylays into your shields there, uh, Pen and Gollin. And you would not only feel the sensation of the shield sort of evaporating around you, uh, but there's also the sensation that there's some sort of lingering biotic, biotic energy about your form. Yeah. And that is and the air. All right, so that would have been. Let's see, does damage round up or down? Uh, rounds up. All right, so six damage. Mm -hmm. Juna, top of the round. What uh, what are you gonna do here? Uh, you are in fire, which I should look up here. Uh, let's. Oh, see. Are we all on fire? Anyone within the orange square would be on fire. Well. The fire is in the orange square, so as long as you're within the orange square, you're on fire. But if you move out of it, you're not. Uh, but let me double check. Uh, let's see. Appendix conditions. Uh, does it cover burning? Apparently it does not. I'm just going to say that every round you start or move into the orange square, you're going to take 1d4 damage. Uh, so All that's right. going to be, for Juna, that's going to be three damage. All right. Um, uh, this is very tight quarters. And I don't really feel like running in front. <laughs> so I will... Can I get... Um, what's the best line of sight? I'll step back to here, and I'll actually try and hide around the corner, and okay. hold again. Hold my action to shoot in case any of them come through here. But bonus action will hide. And hiding my... is very important in this system because during combat it is one of the very few ways you can recover shields. Yep. So as long as you do not take any damage before the start of your next turn, your shields will regenerate. Alrighty. Did you uh, did you take the three damage, by the way? Yes. Okay. Uh, Pen and Gollin, uh, you are going to take the same three damage. All righty. And then it is your turn. All righty. I'm looking a little hurt. All right. Well, 
uh, pulling back wouldn't really work for him, so he's gonna pull pull out into the corridor. Okay. Sort of see his options, and he is going to uh, use his action to drop the hex shield down on the north side of that square to block off that part of the corridor. Okay. So, uh, yeah, basically that's just a 2 by 2 meter shield that drops down, has 5 AC and 50 hit points. Okay. And then he's going to continue his movement down south to there. And as soon as you're around the corner, you see not one, but unfortunately two legionnaires waiting for you. And then he'll use Adrenaline Rush to take an additional action. Okay. And that action will be to lay down a burst fire with the assault rifle. Alrighty. Uh, let me just double check. The, I think it's a 3x3 three three cube uh, square. Let's see. Burst fire. Four meter cube. Yeah, so pretty much the same uh, as the square. So yes, you could conceivably hit both Legionnaires. Yeah, so he will get both of those in the thing, and they need to make a DC 17 dexterity saving throw to avoid the damage. Uh, is it uh, full avoidance, or do they still take half? Full avoidance. All right. So you said dexterity, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Saving throw for the first one fails. Saving throw for the second one. Uh, you said it was a DC... 17. Then, yeah, definitely fails. All right. And then I will use another Weapon Master die to increase the damage roll by 1d8. All righty. So, 4 plus... Further 2, so 6 damage each. All right. So you come lumbering around the corner, and your assault rifle on your shoulder begins firing uh, bursts at the two legionnaires that have uh, sort of revealed themselves to you. Uh, you do immediately tear through their shields, but uh, you only just get through them. They seem to have only just taken a superficial amount of damage, all things considered. All right, and then he will use the last bit of his movement to back up so that other people can start pouring through and attacking them. Alrighty. Oran, what are you up to? Well, considering how well my shotgun has gone, um, I'm going to begin a move action. Mm -hmm. uh, while moving, I'm going to collapse and sheath the katana okay. and just take my axe in a double-handed grip. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wander through, well, wander, stride into the corridor, and I would say immediately as you go into the corridor, you look to your right, and there is a uh, hex shield there blocking your way to uh, get to that other guy. But the good news uh, is that it's blocking him as well. Very well. Uh, let's see. So I have a movement of how many meters that was? Oh, 10 meters. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, I ha I'm... I'm sorry, I'm a little rusty with a with fifth edition and AOE. I'm assuming attacks of opportunities are still a thing. They are, yes. Okay, so I will just enter the diagonal okay. and do a two-handed attack with my monomolecular axe. Alrighty. Oh god dang it. Well, apparently the dice are not on your side today because as you swing with your axe, the Legionnaire is pretty much able to just sidestep your blow as if it were nothing. Okay. Well, that was fun and entertaining. Mm -hmm. uh, do I have anything I can cast as a bonus? I don't believe so. Okay. That is going to be my turn. All righty, Thorin. All right. I'm activating Tactical Cloak. So okay. now I'm invisible. Um... I'm going to squeeze past uh, Panagallon. Get back here. Okay. And then my action is to reload my gun. Okay. And that is my turn. BZ, what you got going on? Uh... 
He's got um, what, that guy's blocked, you said? or Yeah, I mean, there's sort of a uh, transparent shield that is separating the two of you. Um, it's not something... I mean, you could conceivably start shooting the shield to bring it down, but otherwise it's a kinetic barrier. Uh, there oh, is there no going is. through it. Yeah, basically, the logic is like, wall off that side so we can deal with these guys first and then switch to the others. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, yes, and be because I didn't flavor it, the way the hex shield works is like there's a little like like sort of small rectangular like metal thing on his chest which like pops off and deploys into the shield. Mm -hmm. And the shield itself is, I, I'm imagining to be the kinetic fields from Mass Effect 1 where it's sort of that hexagonal shaped uh, big energy yeah. field. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a big hexagon just physically blocking the thing so that he's basically can't get past. Mm -hmm. Alright, if I can see this uh, the one legionnaire over there by, by Oron. Yep, definitely can. So I'm going to walk over there and kind of wave my hand. Fill with like that dark blue energy. Of... Throw a bunch of random. See the... Yay! Uh, ranged attack. All right, yeah, nineteen will definitely hit. No, it won't even. I have to roll separately. Six damage. All right, and uh, does he actually move anywhere? Um, and I hit the target takes force damage equal to one d eight, and the target's medium or smaller is pushed back ten meters. Ten meters. All right, so BZ, you. Round the corner, charge up your biotic powers, and you send this legionnaire literally flying into uh, the recesses of the freighter. And they go flying 10 meters, so they're only able to fly over to here against the far wall and slam into it with a muffled thump. Uh, they do appear to still be operational, but you have dealt a heavy blow. Are they prone? I'm or... going to say they are because they collided with the wall. Okay. Is uh, each square is at one meter or two meter? Uh, each square is uh, one meter. Hmm. I think it might be meant to be two. That's what I was. Yeah, uh, I'll, we'll double check it afterwards. All right, because it lets medium is two by two meters. Nah, if medium's two by two, I'll I'll fix it uh, for future. Uh, actually, I'll fix it during the break. But uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's we'll, we'll keep enough. it as it is for now. Yeah, I'll say even if they were two by two, yeah, that's still enough that he would fly over and hit the wall. Alrighty. So, uh, up next is going to be all the Legionnaire's turn. And uh, the Legionnaire uh, is going to see you, Oron, uh, and it says, the hell is a Batarian. You know what? I don't care. And they open fire with their rifle. So, survey says, does a 12 hit you? Okay, I'm going to do a reaction. Okay. Which is my fortification. So I gain plus 5 AC until the start of my next turn. Which I believe is more than enough for you all to uh, weather the blow. Mm -hmm. All right. And then uh, the next two Legionnaires up top, I'm just moving them all in the same time. Uh, they are going to go about here to get a... Sh they're going to move around the crates to try and get a shot on one of you this one is going to actually step into the corridor and pull back his fellow and uh as for legionnaire that just came around the corner uh they are going to open fire at let's do oron again so okay, how first. does they no with the six they utterly fail so their shots just go completely wild all right oh uh other question yes it would have started in the fire or the persistent damage. Uh, if you started in the fire, you did take three damage at the start of your turn. Cool. But yeah, uh, good news is that uh, new round, which means, uh, Juno, your shields recharge. Nice. And they're going to take a bit of damage as I try and run through the fire. So that's. Yep, yeah, that's going to be a grand total of three damage again. That's as far as my movement can get me. Uh, yeah. GM, did you want to roll another D4? Because I didn't take any damage in a fire. Uh, you would have gotten three as well. I'm just I rolling it on a per round basis rather than individually. Okay. 
Uh, I will, before I get into line of sight, bonus action, uh, engage tactical cloak, turn it invisible. Okay. And then action will dash. So. Also, the distances should be fixed now. 10. I'll action dash down here, but I am currently invisible. And that's my turn. Noted. Pen and Gollin, you actually uh, have not taken any damage, but because you have not hid, disengaged, etc., unfortunately, your shields stay offline. But it is your turn. It is your turn. All righty. Opening up with another burst fire round on those two legionnaires. All right, go for it. Oh, yeah, 17, so will, 17 definitely will definitely hit. Oh, wait, it's my roll. Sorry. All right. So first one fails. Second one also fails. So they take a grand they total a grand of total three, damage. three damage. So the uh, one who... So the... Oh, go ahead. Basically just keeping their shields down. Yeah. Uh, and you're doing good work. Uh, you've almost torn through one of the Legionnaires' uh, shields, the one whose shield you had knocked offline previously. Uh, they are otherwise taking some uh, hits to the body, as it were. And is there anything else you'd like to do during your turn? Yeah, let's see, he's running a lot of ammo, so he will actually come down here. Sort of, mm, actually, no, he won't. That'll leave him more exposed. Uh, there's, uh, there's no sort of barrier there. That's just uh, Oron, right? Yeah, that's just Oron. All right, in that case, he will just hunker down and brace himself. All righty. Oron, what you got going on? Okay. Um, I'm at this point, I feel that I have something to prove. Mm -hmm. So I am going to um, use my charge act charge cantripped um i have no idea why it says all slots expended i don't think that's a thing i need to worry about <clears throat> um where i basically cho uh choose um this individual that i can't ping because i don't have one to the south okay yeah uh let's see i am going to basically immediately throw myself at him all right and uh, what is your DC on your on the saving throw? Uh, DC is um, wisdom save. I think that's just a spell save of 12. Well, with a five, what's going to happen is you fling yourself at that individual. And uh, go ahead and roll me some damage here. 1d10, and he's still, he would be prone, but he's already prone so yeah so what i'm going to say here oran is as you sort of fling yourself across the gigantic cargo hold uh you impact with such force in the legionnaire uh that because he is prone your boots literally crush his skull and he is no longer hmm. and and that's just an action so i'm going to do my move and whoop, come up around here Okay. And that's me. Alrighty. Up next, Thorin. Okay. Um, try and check quickly if sight would be so nice. Action. Okay. So, uh, I am going to. How big is Pentagon? Can I shoot like around him? Yeah, like you can if shoot I around, around him. Yeah, yeah it's okay. always assumed that your allies will get out of the way of your fire. Somehow. Okay. Well, in his case, I guess I'm going to be kind of hunkered down. Uh, I'm going to do another steady aim. And that Legionnaire in front is going to get shot in the face with Mantis. All right. Hopefully. Let's see. Would I have advantage right. since I'm uh, cloaked? I would say that, that you get will there. get your sneak attack damage. How about that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 24 is definitely going to hit. <laughs> oh, God, that poor man. Yeah, so you don't even need to roll sneak attack. But again, you fire your mantis, and <laughs> there was a head there. Now it is just confetti. Um, 
yep, that's my turn. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just I'm just hunkering here. So as Batarian blood rains down from the stump of the legionnaire's neck, uh, BZ, what would you like to do? Hmm, can't see anyone <laughs> other than those two that are behind that. Oh, yeah, you, you were seeing a lot of fire come through to the left. Do I know how long that the wall that could be created will last, or is that? It, it's bas- It has fifty hit points, and it lasts until the hit points reach zero. Okay. And I walk around there, as my bonus action, activate my barrier since I should have done that last. Okay. And I'm just gonna. There's that dead batarian. I'm gonna throw that dead batarian at his buddy. I like it. <laughs> Right. So he needs to make a dexterity save. Survey says, unfortunately, he passes. I think it might be a save for half. Okay. Oh, I'm just beat it. If I wanted. Mm-hmm. I failed save. No, so it's all right. Yeah. That's so unfortunately, what's going to happen is you uh, pick up the dead Batarian and you fling him at his fellow, but unfortunately, uh, you do so in a sort of clumsy manner. Such that as the corpse sa- sails at him, the legionnaire is able to sidestep, and the corpse just sort of splatters against one of the crates, painting it with new blood. Ah, uh, ah! Uh, Corbord halfway through. Oh, uh, everywhere. Why did I do that? <laughs> all right. Up next is going to be all the legionnaires. Uh, BZ, uh, you are unfortunately first in the line of fire. So. Actually, um... I would have a movement left over. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and move if you're going to move. I would have actually... Okay. Going back to there. In that case, uh, Penn and Gallen, uh, you are up front. Up front. Uh, but I think the Legionnaire is smart enough to determine that you are not really the threat here. It's the Thorin or the uh, the uh, Thorian behind you that's the threat. So... so Fortunately, I am giving him half cover. Yep. Which is a plus two AC, if I recall correctly. I believe so. Yep. So, with a six, yeah, so he misses. Uh, As for the two Legionnaires up top, uh, they are going to... uh, One is going to move to there. The other one is going to... Now, correct me if I'm wrong, the Hex has 50 or 15? 50, 5-0. 5-0, and AC of 5. Okay. Uh, that one is going to take a look at the shield, uh, sort of, uh, look at his weapon and decide not with trying to burst through it and we'll walk around the corner to his left. Now, just checking ranges and line of sight here. I believe that the Legionnaire here, uh, Juno, you're invisible, uh, is not able to see Penn and Gallen. So that is the Legionnaire's turn. I think those are great. So... Yeah. So, yeah, Juna, it is now your turn. Invisibility paid off. Mm-hmm. Mm, let's have some fun. What is this? That's a bonus action. All right. The range is 20. He's within range, definitely, yeah. All right, so I will cast Invasion. On these should be a a controlled machine swarm at a target or creature within range and then spread to as long as they're within six meters. Target must make a constitution saving throw on a fail that takes three psychic and has disadvantage on attack rolls until the spell ends. Okay, uh, DC. Targeting this one. And then it'll spread with this one. Yep, so the DC is a 14. They succeed, unfortunately. Which Damn. I believe means it does not even spread. Let me read that again. Uh... No. Uh, no, because the not. spreading happens before they make the save. Yeah, so let me roll for the other one. Uh, the other one does not succeed. So, uh, it is going to take the three psychic 
and is otherwise going to have disadvantage on attack rolls. Very nice. Bees, the bees, the robotic bees. <laughs> Pretty much, Pretty yeah. Much. That's uh, that, that is what's swarming the legionnaire at the moment. And then, since it was my action, I'll run down. I'll run down here. And uh, yeah, run down here and bonus action hide. Okay. Penangalan. Alrighty. Uh, now the. Uh, these crates, are they, like, tall enough for full cover, or are they half cover? Uh, you would have to be prone to get full cover. Okay, so they're, they're like, waist-height crates, sort of deal. Standard Mass Effect, yeah. Alright, so... He will lumber forward to there. Mm -hmm. And then open fire on that Legionnaire with the Shuriken on his other shoulder. So basically what that looks like is he sort of like comes forward and as the assault rifle sort of finishes rattling off shots, it sort of like resets and like that mecha that cybernetic arm sort of pulls it back and then the weapon on the other shoulder pops up, comes forward, cocks and lets loose. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, you oh, that is a critical hit. And uh, I will definitely use another superiority dice to give that a plus 1d8, because that'll double. Alrighty. Oof. So that is a... Uh, did that add the... I it think did I add might the have crit, added, yeah. added the damage bonus twice. Uh, so that's a grand total of, I can math today, uh, no, it uh, no, it didn't roll it twice, because that's 2d4 each time. So, yeah, so let's see, 12, 13, yep, 19 damage. Okay, and which one were you targeting? That, that one. one there. That one. All right. Shuriken All right. only has a range of 2 meters before it gets disadvantage. If you would care to describe how dead this one is. Oh, basically, he just like advances forward. The thing pops up, opens fire, and just sort of perforates him and pins him up against the crate as it finishes unloading the clip. Okay, so it's sort of like uh, that scene where uh, I can't remember the name of the movie, but it's like probably actually any movie where the uh, the quote unquote evil bad guy is thrown against the the wall. This time, it's crates. And you just sort of perforate him or perforate him with bullets, and his body and slumps over backwards over the crate uh, with blood coating the immediate area. And then he sort of like swivels around, sees the other two legionnaires, and let's see, where's a good place? Um, uh, he he is just go. He will. Ah. Yeah, so are the legionnaires sort of like on top of the crates or uh they are just shooting above them they are just standing it's just that again because they are waist high they can still shoot over them all right then he will use the rest of his movement to shift over there noted boron what you got going on okay so uh just because how fog of war makes things look only these two are still up correct correct Okay. Um, then I will one. And each square is we're counting as two meters now. Correct. Okay. So uh, that will be an action there, and then I will be pulling out my shotgun. And now this guy is currently distracted because of the bees. Because of the virtual bees, yes. Right. So, uh, what's the range on? my katana i believe it's full damage within four meters and half damage within six well i, I think it's disadvantage on the attack roll rather than half ah. damage oh that's what that means okay yeah so within four meters or yeah so within four meters is regular and within eight is disadvantage yeah, so the closest yeah. one to you would be within eight, so it would be a disadvantage. Okay, then I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to use my biotic charge because I believe that is a spammable ability. If it's a cantrip. If it's a cantrip. 
Now, some some of my cantrips say I can only use them but once per rest. And that's not one of them. So, yep, I'm just going to charge right up and attempt to knock him prone. Okay. Uh, dexterity DC of 12. Save, please. Sure. Survey says... Total of 13. Yeah, so, nope. Okay, then as my bonus action, I will activate my barrier. Alrighty. Thorin. Okay. Uh, I'm going to... Whoops, wrong button. One, two, three, four, five. Um, can I see any of these guys over here? You definitely can, yes. Uh, the one that... Uh, Aren't going to. I'm going to take a look at him. I'm going to use my stim pack as a bonus action. Mm -hmm. And that gets me. Find it here. All right. And then I'm going to, as an action, incinerate that man. I like it. And I'm going to. Now, for the stim pack there. Uh, do I need to roll the d4? Or do I hit? Uh, with a 13, you will hit him. Yeah, a hit, the target is primed fire. So yeah, you fling a uh, a plasma round at the Legionnaire that uh, Oran has tried to charge and failed. And Oran, there's just sort of a burst of fire over your shoulder that slams into the Legionnaire. And yeah, go ahead and roll me some damage. 13. So you are able to actually kill this man outright. So the fireball uh, of sorts hits him and he emolates into ash before Oron's very eyes. I'm just going to say... We already, have, we already have our main rivalry set up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's three. Uh, the, as I am... Preparing to move, make my next engagement, I will quickly raise a lewd gesture with my offhand. <laughs> That's <Fair>. my turn. <laughs> BZ, what do you got going on? All right. Anyone? There's a legionnaire there. Mm -hmm. And what does he look like? He's up. Uh, he is currently swatting himself, trying to get the virtual bees off of him. <laughs> All right. Uh, I can shoot him. Or... <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to hit him with throw. Don't need to actually. Um, is there any, does it look like there's anyone else here? No, you're not seeing anyone in the immediate area. It's just this one. Well, just in case we need uh, someone alive, I'm going to hit him with gravity field and just going to grease the gravity rod. Crush okay. To make a strength throw. 15. He has rolled an 18, so unfortunately he does succeed. And so I just... To him. Alrighty. So the Legionnaire... Uh, is basically swatting at virtual bees, is uh, going to fire wildly. He will have disadvantage on this, but Oran, you are the closest target, so you are who is going to be potentially hit here. All right. Uh, with a seven, though, it ain't happening. Awesome. And then correct me if I'm wrong, he can make a save against the swarm. Uh, I think he has to use his action to do it. You're right, he does have to use his action. Therefore, nothing else happens on his turn. So it's a, Juno. Yeah, it's an action to make a constitution check to see if he can break it. Yeah. All right, right. Juno, what you got going on? Uh, cool because you did hide, your shields do recharge. Oh, yep. Thank you for reminding me. I almost forgot. Uh, two, four, Six. I'll hop up on these crates to get a clear shot at this guy. Okay. And I'll fire my uh, the M ninety seven Viper. Ooh. And a sixteen is more than enough to hit. So you do something very similar. That before Oron can get his teeth into anything, you blow up the Legionnaire completely. 
and I and since I am a saboteur, uh, combat forensics, I get a I get my uh, tech point back that I use for. Interesting. So as the uh, viper rings out and the legionnaire drops, there is a natural silence as uh, it seems that this particular encounter has ended. Right. Yep. They will have heard that combat. We need to investigate and move on fast. Yeah. Yeah, Flag walls and then sort of a double as the two heat sinks eject from Pan and Garland's weapons and he sort of gets to stick some Maddie gel, activates a Maddie gel pack to regain some hit points. Okay. I'm going and to start loot. I'm going to start looting through one of the, the closest legionnaires' body. I'm looking for insignia. Um, are they affiliated with any known pirate groups or anything like that? Can I make a you may roll an investigation? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. While he's doing that, he uh, Thorne's going to look to Juno. Like, mm. Any consoles you can use to lock down the um, docking clamps on their vessels? That's what I'm going to look for. If, uh, try and find a console with the schematic, see if I can't find anything. All right. We'll handle that in a moment. Uh, Oran, you don't find anything besides a Blue Sun's tattoo on one of them. Uh, is the armor that they're wearing also similar to Blue Sun's? or No, interestingly, it is different. It is not the stereotypical blue and uh, black. It is uh, almost red in color. Hmm. Well, I'll make a obvious show of the tattoo to my uh, fellow castmates. Hmm. Are they are they all like really really dead dead? Yeah, they're anyone... super dead. In fact, the one you left in the fire is literally a chart. They, they, he is Uncle Ben. <laughs> Aww. All right, so Pangalan goes back to recollect the hex shield and then just does a sweep of the perimeter to make sure there's no one like hiding around. Any okay, Aaron, if you can grab all their Omni tools, we can then look at them afterwards. Right. And I'll grab whatever Omni tools and any other interesting things I might be able to find. Um, I'm... Because of my four eyes, I can make a search action basically as a bonus action each turn. So it would go fairly quick. Noted. I am scouting around to see if maybe any of these containers were opened, uh, either being rummaged through or someone possibly hiding in one. Uh, what I would say as I check lighting here, so Pen and Gollin... Uh, if I can move you temporarily. Mm -hmm. uh, when you were up here uh, to the north, or about halfway through the cargo bay, if you look uh, just beyond... Sure. Uh, yep. uh, yeah, if you look just beyond the elevator, there is what appears to be a shielded compartment, meaning that there is an actual energy barrier over it, but you can see inside this larger area, and what appears to be a Krogan... Uh, wearing civilian clothes is encased within this shielded area. Yep, so, so as he sees that, he'll sort of pause and then go over the comms to the others. Status report. Status report. Possible, uh, possible civilian hostage ahead. Understood. I'm on my way. Yeah, um, bandy will be doing start to there. advance. That is a Krogan. I'm going to raise the uh, Leonidas and just say go. Okay. So, uh, as you all sort of advance, go ahead and put yourselves where you want to be. Okay. So as you sort of swarm this area, uh, the Krogan sort of looks up. And uh, now that you're closer to them, you can see that they are uh, lighter purple uh, with a darker purple carapace. And, uh, you know, it's hard to tell male, female Krogan apart, at least as far as lore is concerned. But uh, your guess is that she is female because she begins speaking and says, who the hell are you? I am Pen and Garland of the uh, uh, what was the Elcor's home planet name? Dakuna, right? D Dakunan Colonist Defense Force. Sergeant Cruel of the Forty Third Marine Division. We are your people who are saving your ass. Who are you? Uh, 
Uh, I am, I am uh, Jackson Guska. I I was a passenger on this vessel. And why are Batarian pirates trying to capture you? I I honestly have no idea. Do you know what the cargo on this vessel is? Uh, she kind of looks past you at the crates. Uh, medical supplies, I think. Mm. Why are you in a interesting setup here? Well, mostly because I overheard the captain talking about a secure room. Uh, what is it? The, the the humans call it a panic room. Yes, that's what it is—a panic room. And I ran in here as soon as uh, bullets started flying. Unfortunately, it seems I'm trapped. I've tried to rescind the shielding such that I can escape elsewhere, but it appears someone on the bridge has locked me out, so that I'm stuck here. Do you know if any of the other crew are still alive? She hesitates and says, I'm pretty sure I saw the last of them killed about five minutes before I heard you all coming in. Are you capable in a fight? No, no, I am uh, quite rubbish when it comes to fighting. Then I, th then I say it's best to leave you in here until we clear the rest of the ship. You're safer in there. Agreed. Well, let's look around the ship and secure everything. All right. And I tell Potentially you what, we've been going for an hour, yeah. so why don't we take our 10-minute uh, break here? Uh, See so yeah, stream. We'll be right back.
right, and welcome back, everyone. And if you're just tuning in, uh, our Spectre candidates have found a captive Krogan and that they are presumably trying to save them from the Blue Suns that are raiding the freighter that had sent out a distress call. So we drop pretty much right back into the action. It's maybe been about two, three minutes since you've encountered uh, Guska. And what is it you all would like to do? Oren's going to look to Juna and just nod his head like for her to uh, mess with those uh, shuttles that are docked so they can't get away. Yeah, I'll ask uh, Guska, yes? Where is a term like an access for the ship's control? Well, there's a terminal right there, and she points to literally the terminal that is right next to you, but I'm pretty sure that only controls the, well, what once was access to this room. No, we'll figure this room out in a moment. We're first going to secure the vessel. I mean for the airlocks for the pirate vessels. Yeah, that that's probably a bridge thing. Understood. Um, also, uh, Actually, with um... the schematics of the ship, I would like to try and locate uh, where the drive core and where, like basically the engine room would be. This in case that if they try and take if they try and hijack the ship, maybe we can disable the engine. That would be all the way to the rear. And or on uh, this map to the, the south. Where's the access points to their like? Um... Say again. The their shuttles like they dock right. Yeah, so there are uh, shuttles docked uh, over to the west, uh, to the east, and then to the southwest. We should probably make sure that the shuttles are clear. Yeah, that's my thought. Is any either of you any of you good at engineering or repairs? I break things. I don't fix them. Excellent. Why don't you go break their shuttles so they can't take off? So if forget my... anyone, they can't. Very well. Um, then I shall start proceeding in the where was it? The northwest direction. Uh, to the west, the east, and the southwest. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I'll go to the west, and I will have my combat shotgun out with its uh, presence sensor. Okay. So, remind me, that's a range of 10, yeah? 10 meters, yes. Okay, I'm just going to put an aura on you, because that'll be easier. Okay. And Pen and Garland will go to sweep the east shuttle. Okay. I'm and assuming I have... that's... Is this the airlock here? Uh, up here. Oh, up here, okay. No, and uh, Pentagon, for... when you turn the corner there, so everybody move where you want to move, and then things are going to happen. So I'd imagine I'd get to there before I spot him. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be interesting because uh, because of how you all have moved, uh, several things happen. So Pentagon, you round the corner going towards one of the shuttles and nearly run into another Blue Suns member. And the further bad news is BZ, when you poke your head and look around the corner into the bridge, you see that there are two heavily armored centurions uh, waiting and conversing. Now, they haven't acted yet, but given the fact Penangalan has already found uh, a trooper, combat is more or less going to break out unless Penangalan can silently kill this trooper. Can I see can this? I see, like, like, through my lighting, I can see him. Do I actually see something? Uh, let me check. Uh, let me check. Uh, unfortunately, no. in a, no. uh, unfortunately, an assassin, he is not so... I, I think he's going to at least attempt the uh, sort of the diplomacy you. route and sort of basically rounds the corner, sort of sees him like the assault rifle swivels to target and he says intimidatingly, lay down your weapons and surrender. Go ahead and roll me an intimidation. <laughs> Intimidating me. <laughs> so, that's about that's right. That's, that's about right. With, with a natural one, the trooper answers by opening fire. So he is going to get an attack on you, and then we're going to go into actual initiative order. So let's see. For a trooper... They do a grand total of... Apparently I didn't fill out his sheet properly. I'll have to fix that later. Uh, he has a plus three to hit. All right. 
So survey says, uh, I don't think an 11 hits you. Nope. Yep. So a sound of a shotgun of a katana firing uh, echoes throughout the freighter, and uh, yep, and he just like, shifts slightly, and it just just pings off the heavy armor. Right. And uh, BZ, unfortunately, the Centurions do appear to notice uh, the gunfire because they turn and are going to start heading in a direction very quickly. But if everybody could roll me initiative, please. Yep. Okay, so 17. Now, for mechanics' sakes, did our talk oh, with... That's uh, definitely not what I'm going to have for initiative. Jaskin count as a uh, short rest? Uh, no, but you could have spent Metagel. Uh, initiative of 14. So it's probably like a minute, less than a minute. Yeah, it was very yeah. quick. <clears throat> yeah, like, I, I think for the conversation we had enough, just enough time for the shields to recharge. Mm-hmm. All right, and then for the trooper, I believe they have a three. Where is it? No, they just have a one. All right. So for the trooper, that's going to be a six. So they aren't moving a whole lot. For this enemy, they have a grand total of same thing. Not very dexterous, are they? Ooh, they're going last. And then I need to add the centurions. And the Centurions also... No, they actually have a two. Oh, useful. I can actually set initiative to have disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so as appearing to be the case, uh, Juna, you have heard a katana discharging, and uh, it's coming from the direction of Penangalan. That's pretty far away. <laughs> I could get to there with the dash. Yeah, I'll do exactly that. There we go. Uh, it went, numbers went weird. Um, oh, damn. Yeah, so action dash towards where I hear it, but I can't get close enough yet. Alrighty. All right, so um, actually, this will probably become relevant in this one. So, Ilich, uh, mm -hmm. how do you want to handle like shooting around the hex shield? Because it counts as full cover. Will it be a case of just using movement to pop out behind fire and then pop back behind again? Something like that, yeah. Cool. Oh, oh. I can dash as a bonus action. I forgot. I didn't know that. All right, so a bonus action dash can actually... On, on how far was it from here to get to him? It's actually faster to go that way. So yeah, I'll bonus action dash instead because I didn't I didn't know I could do that. Uh, now I can see. It. Uh, and then yeah, no need to be fancy. I'll just fire at him. Okay. Yeah, a twenty four is gonna hit. So your Viper rings out again, uh, immediately pierces his shield, does not actually take him down, though. Oh, wait, uh, he's uh, within five feet, so that's sneak attack as well. I, I forgot I had sneak, I'm forgetting everything. Are you like that, the story of D&D? &D? Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> With a six, damage. unfortunately, that's still not enough to bring him down. Damn it. <laughs> All right. So, Oron, uh, you're picking up a whole lot of nothing on your combat sensor over there. Well, that's... I had to choose one. I chose poorly. Therefore, one, two, three, So, when five. you get that far, you are detecting the two life signs that are in the bridge, which is to your northeast. That's here, right? Yep. Okay, uh, still don't have line of sight on anything, so I'll just do a double move and end up here. And as a bonus action, activate my barrier. Okay. And then it is the Centurion's turn. So they sort of look at one another. Uh, they One of them says, all right, you handle that one. I'm going this way. So the Centurion closest to you, Oron, is going to... Uh, take up his weapon, which happens to be a scimitar, 
and they are going to open fire. So that's going to be a grand total of 17 versus your AC. That is definitely going to hit. Excellent. Then you are going to be taking a grand total of six piercing, and you too feel the uh, sort of warp-like effect of, well, the warp <laughs> overtaking you. You are currently primed. Oh, fun. Uh, let me just... So... And, uh, Sorry, while... just double checking how. Okay, so I remove one tick, reduce the damage by one d eight. You Ooh, reduce nice. it completely. Nice. So you're still primed, but your barrier has taken care of the damage for you. Isn't the, isn't that eleven? Six was five eleven damage. Uh, that, no, that, that was because the right. yeah, because that was the the second oh. roll rolled a crit, so it automatically ah. doubled. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, cool. And then uh, BZ, uh, as the Centurion walks out, he turns the corner and says, Whoa! The hell are you? And uh, he, too, will open fire with his scimitar. Uh, uh, sorry, Graham. Uh, sorry, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, with a 16, does that hit you? Oh, yeah. All right. You are going to take six piercing damage. <laughs> and then it is Penn and Gollin's turn. Alrighty. Um, well, currently, that guy's got cover, so he will shift there to get a clear line of sight, and then he will hip fire with the SM with the scimitar. Alrighty. Oh, no, not the scimitar, the shuriken. Yeah, with a 19, yeah, a 19. You're gonna... and then he will use his last superiority dice to boost that damage by 1d8, just to make sure he's... And yeah, with uh, that much, you turn this trooper into chunky salsa and giblets rain down everywhere. Alrighty, and so that was one movement, and then he will... Well, that was two, rather. So he can move two more squares so he will go and then drop down the hex shield on the north side of that of his square okay and you said it was a two by two yeah so it basically just blocks one side of a square so like that uh no no, no. hang on let me grab the Line there. Let's try that on a brighter color. There we go. Like immediately in front of him. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll go with your little squiggles there. Alrighty. So Thorin, uh, I'd like you to roll me a perception, please. Okay. Hmm. A twenty-two. Uh, with your 22, with your uh, Thorian uh, hearing, such as it is, uh, you do hear some kind of motion or something, maybe like someone tripping over something, to the south. Okay. Uh, tactical cloak. Mm -hmm. Do I have an idea where exactly in the south? Uh, I would say uh, directly across from where you came in. I.e. directly across from where your shuttle is currently docked. All right, so I, I can assume, like, I can guess that maybe around here. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> uh, all right. That's as far as my movement can take me. Okay. Uh, but I am technically invisible, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my action. Um, if I see anyone coming out this doorway that looks like any of these, that uh, looks like a hostile, I'm going to shoot them in the throat. <laughs> okay. A lot of throat shooting today. Call him Thorn the Thorax Slayer. Oh, <laughs> All right, BZ, what you got going on? You've got it, a, uh... It's like a headshot, but more hipster. <laughs> um... You said it was really fast between the combats. Would it be in under a minute? Would my barrier still be up? Uh, no, I would say that uh, it has been m probably more like two, three minutes. I didn't think I was that. Long. 
Uh, I'm going to. Um, these guys are a nice slow line, so I'm going to fire off a shockwave. Cascading Ooh. shockwave, 10 meters wide and 10 meters long. So both centurions need to make me a dexterity. Does that affect me as well? No, because I can shape my barrier. My barrier cool. kind of avoids you. The giant wave of biotic force rushes out towards you, and you're like, ah, oh, for half a second, and it just kind of like flows around you. Well, that one definitely fails. That one definitely uh, passes. Save, creature tanks, 3d6 force damage, and is not. And is not prone, you said? And is not. So that's going to be 13 damage to the one directly in front of you. So uh, your shockwave rumbles through him, and, and uh, his shields are almost knocked offline. Uh, is there half damage on that? Um, half damage. Okay. So the other one does take uh, his own hit, but uh, really you've just sort of pissed them off even further. I guess I look at him and blow him a little kiss. Nice. like it. And uh, bonus action, reactivate my barrier. Okay. So I'm about to get shot, I think. <laughs> well, maybe. So uh, on the next turn, uh, with uh, Juna and Penangalan, a uh, heavier-looking uh, individual from Blue Sun sort of rounds the corner here, and I... I think I can see uh, Juna from... Yeah, I can see Juna. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> so the uh, the heavy, as they're called, uh, pulls up their missile launcher and fires it at Juna. So oh, I um, need... Reaction, I will cast Sabotage <laughs> on their weapon. Okay, what does that do? Or is it not a attack roll? Yeah, so, yeah, so I, I need to know the flavor text on this, because otherwise there's there's potential problems happening. You're firing a fucking missile at me. That insta-kills me. <laughs> I mean, I have I have this, but okay. I don't know if it would work uh, on this. Da, 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 da. Okay, so it has disadvantage. Okay, that would count. Uh, unfortunately, it's a DC oh. dexterity saving throw. And I need that dexterity saving throw from not just you, but from Penangalan as well. Yeah. Uh, so he's targeting uh, Junan specifically, right? Mm hmm. Can I claim half cover from being on the other side of the hex shield? Uh, I would say maybe, but I don't think that helps with the dexterity saving throw. Uh, actually, it does. it does. Half cover gives me advantage on the dexterity saving throw. Then carry uh, on. Hence carry why on. I'm asking. Yeah, then carry on. You would have advantage. Alrighty. So nineteen. So you're gonna take half damage. So twenty-two. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, twenty-two. Huh. Yeah. So each of you is going to take a grand total of uh, twenty-two damage. Uh, meanwhile, the hex shield will take the full forty-four because hex shields can't make dexterity saving throws. Mm -hmm. So there is so, everybody yeah. <laughs> hears and feels the explosion of a missile. And uh, I think, Juno, you're still up? Question nope. Mark? Is, since I succeeded the save, instead of being insta-killed, I'm just knocked unconscious. <laughs> Alrighty. So it, it, remember, it is important to keep track of your negatives here. Because if you take uh, your maximum health and negatives, you are donezo. Yeah, it, well, in a single hit, yeah. But that knocked me exactly to zero. Alrighty. So, uh, up next, uh, same thing. You to the south, Thorin. Uh, you're cloaked, so when this heavy rounds the corner, he doesn't see you. He doesn't know who the hell you are. So if you want to open fire. Oh, man, I kind of regret saying I prepped that, but hey, I did. Um, advantage? Yeah, you're invisible. Excellent. Go to the lead on. Yeah, oh, hit. that'll hit. All right. And then sneak attack. Oh, and I forgot roll damage. All right, so you're going to do a grand total of 21 damage. 
So you pierce through his shields, but uh, he's a beefy boy and uh, is very much still standing. And you're also no longer invisible. So there's that. Nope. <laughs> All right, Juna, time for a death saving throw. You have succeeded. One out of three. Very nice. All right, Oran, what are you doing? I will take, or I will charge forward and attempt a melee attack. All righty. And I always have a nasty habit of closing my character sheet. Okay. 23 will actually hit. Go ahead and roll me nice. some damage. 13. So you come down with your monomolecular axe in a uh, cross-slashing motion, and you tear through his remaining shields and actually leave a uh, rather impressive-looking uh, gash on his armor. Uh, is he a Batarian by chance? Uh, he looks I... more like a regular humanoid, like he's not a Batarian, because mm. as far as I know, Batarians don't wear helmets. So this more looks like a uh, standard human uh, type thing. I'm pretty sure Batarians would wear helmets if, you know, Bethesda decided to create assets for them, but they didn't. Fair. Bioware. Bioware, Bioware Bethesda, right. Yeah. Bethesda's the other space game. Yeah. 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 Fun fact. Turns out, you know how Elkors have a really weirdly shaped mouth? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was specifically because they were having trouble, like, animating the lip flaps to match with the lip syncing, so they changed the mouth to one that worked better with the existing system. Hmm. That is a fun fact. Cool. Uh, that's my turn. That's your turn. All right, so the Centurions, uh, again, uh, they're not exactly thrilled with either BZ or Oron. So Oron, the one that you just struck with your axe, is actually just going to hip fire his shotgun. So let's see what happens there. I don't believe a 13 hits you. Um, Actually, it would. Oh, no, AC 14. So, AC yeah. 14. All right, so yeah, you're lucky. The 13 didn't hit you. Um, as far as BZ is concerned, though, uh, does a 12 hit you? No. Excellent. So they both open fire and miss completely. Uh, this one is going to pull barely. back. And now, does making a ranged attack in melee still provoke attack of opportunity? That no. is a good question. Let's find it, out. Normally, uh, it, you have hip disadvantage unless the hip. Uh, da, 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 da. You also, oh, here it is. Uh, let's see. Ranged attacks. Aiming a ranged attack is more difficult when a foe is next to you. And blah, 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 blah. No, I want. There we go. You can make okay, an opportunity attack when a hostile creature that you can see moves out of your reach. To make the opportunity attack, you use your reaction to make one melee attack against the provoking creature. So I would say yes, you could make a melee attack. Okay. And, and that I would apply to BZ. And BZ uh, in eight. Well, it's or it's not yours that's moving Oron. It's it's BZ's. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I was asking about making a ranged attack in melee, but apparently that's perfect. Doesn't provoke anything. Ignore my roll. Yeah, yeah, normally uh, it would, but apparently, according to these rules, that is not the case. I don't think I'd have a melee weapon equipped. It probably. Will. Uh, you can do a rifle butt, basically. Yeah. Which uh, is, yeah. I believe, the damage is one d four plus strength. Yep. Okay. One d four plus strength. Oh. Well, the attack roll is nope. Yeah, with a six on the die. Yeah, unfortunately, so you go to rifle butt him, and he just. It, it just connects with air, unfortunately. All right. Uh, so the Centurion's back up, so they're back to back again. And then it is Penn and Gollin's turn. All righty. Can you use metagel on other people? You can yes, indeed. You can. Yes. Can indeed yeah. So he is going to shift there, use a metagel on Juna to okay. heal 2d4 plus 2 damage. Thank you. <clears throat> so seven hit points. Mm -hmm. <sighs> uh, he does want to make sure Juna stays up, so he is going to shift into the corridor and block the tr the heavy. Okay. 
That is your turn. That is my turn. Thorin, you have a gentleman with a missile launcher about to fire it in your face. What are you going to do? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, okay, so I fire my gun, don't have a reload. I am... His shields are down, though? His shields are down, yes. Okay. Um... Do I, want to also, I, I would just like to point out that from this trooper's point of view, he like rounded a corner, saw a quarian, and fired a missile at them. Probably a little overkill, but overkill <laughs> doesn't hurt. And then, and then this extremely like scorched, battle scarred Elcor then just emerges out of the smoke in front of him. It's a very terrifying <laughs> fright. Uh, I'm gonna have him roll something on his turn. Um, I, I can I do a sleight of hand as a bonus action to reload my sniper? Is that something that your class can do? Something that anyone can do. It's a DC 15 sleight of hand check. Ah, you're right. I see it now. Yeah, so it is a DC 15. Uh, if you succeed, uh, it is your bonus. But if you fail, this is your action. If I fail, it's an action. Yeah, it's that's sort of the trade-off. Is if you fail, it it you have to take the reload action. Oh, I thought it jammed my gun if it failed. Let me reread the section. Uh, no, that's not what I want. That's not what I want. No, that doesn't tell me what I want either. Okay, let's try again. Rules, maybe. On a failure, you must take the reload action this turn. On a critical failure, okay. the thermal clip drops from your hand and the weapon is not loaded and you lose your action. <laughs> okay. All right, well, no let's pressure. see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, you oh, reload. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, um, so... I did steady action on him. Mm. That's still in effect because he's still living. He is. I have a feeling he's not about to be. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, going to shoot him again. A 10, oh, no. unfortunately, will miss. No. Do I still have my stim pack? Mm. I think he used it. Yeah, he used it lasts it. for a minute. Nah. It's, yeah, that will have gone by now. Yeah, that's okay. gone. Damn. Well then, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Panic dash. Okay. BZ, uh, that is all happening. Sorry, just got important time. That's fine. Um, I'm going to. Focus the energy of my barrier into defensive attack with phases. And I just clicked away. I think it is a 23 will indeed hit. Yay. Takes eight force damage. Eight force damage. So you are able to completely can his shields. And is there anything else you'd like to do? Move, take cover. Playbulb is going to walk over here to prevent his attack. Okay. So, uh, the heavy that just saw the battle scarred uh, Elicor step out of the sort of the mo the smoke uh, from the missile shot is going to go ahead and uh, roll me something here. Uh, let's call this a wisdom. Uh, with a 14, uh, I think he is going to actually just sort of hastily reload his weapon. Uh, but that is his entire turn. Mm -hmm. So, Juna, it is now your turn. <laughs> uh, get up for half my movement. I can, I can see him, right? Yeah, you can see yeah, him. Yeah, you can see him. I, I think he only gets half cover for me if he's directly next to me. 
I just look at him and say, Bosh Tet, as I fire. An eight, unfortunately, will not hit. Oh, bonus action fire again with double tap. A nine will not oh, hit either. God. I'm still chuck from getting blown up. Mm -hmm. All right, Aura. Uh, but I will move. Okay. Right here, hide behind, hide, hide behind the hex shield. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so uh, Oran, what do you got going on? Well, it actually worked last time, so I'll do it again. Uh, Two-headed slash attack. Axe to the face. Yeah, 21 will definitely hit. Axe to the face, indeed. For a total of 12 That's slashing. Good. Very nice. <clears throat> and I'm assuming you're going to stay where you are? Yeah, I'm quite happy. Not. I'm quite happy where I am. Excellent. All right, on the uh, Centurion's turn, I'm just looking at uh, the Beast area here to make sure I'm not missing anything. Let's see. Does he have anything interesting? Ah, oh, well, that's good to know. Apparently, uh, he gains a plus four to the weapon if they were within normal range. So this is actually going to be at a plus four. Yeah, this is going to be at a plus four. And what I'm going to say is as you hit him, he's going to use his reaction before his turn mm. to activate his tech armor. So a sort of oh. orange shimmering field comes up over his torso, uh, supplementing uh, his defenses. Now, does that just add an extra layer of hit points like my like a shield or does that add an extra like AC? Uh, it does both. It adds AC and it adds temporary hit points. Oh, fun. OK, cool. All right, so uh, on his actual turn, he's just going to hip fire his shotgun at you. And remember, this number is plus four. Uh, well, that's a crit. <laughs> so you're going to take a grand total of 11 piercing damage. Okay. And you are considered primed once again. And then the other centurion, the one close to the BZ, is going to open fire just uh, same sort of deal. Survey says a 23 will hit BZ. And that's going to be for a total of only three piercing. And my barrier goes down. Okay. So your barrier handles the shot quite well. All right, Penn and Gollin, uh, you have a heavy that has reloaded his missile launcher. And there is and nothing there between is you nothing. and him. Yeah. All right. Uh, action. I'm going to... Hit him with the SMG, and I'm going to use my inspiration point to get advantage. Alrighty. And for the curious, I got that for a good joke during session zero. Nice. That's a 21. Yeah, 21 will definitely hit. Six piercing. Six piercing. So you do sort of ping off his shields, but his shields remain standing, unfortunately. Yep. And then for movement, we'll go one, two, three to get behind cover. All right. Thorin. Ooh, do I want to risk it for the biscuit, guys? Play bulls. Go big or go home. Yeah, okay. You That's the Turian way, it. isn't it? That is true. Sleight of hand snap. reload. Let's see if you pass your sleight of hand here. Did it not trigger? No. Oh, oh, unfortunately, no. you must spend your entire action reloading. That's okay. Uh, do, do, do. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Run Game away! Some... Yeah, until I get another shot lined up. Alright. BZ, what you got going on? Uh, since these guys are tough and we're getting hurt, I'm going to fire off gravity fields into them. Okay. Feel the unstable gravity, six meter cube. Um, difficult terrain, and they may just make a strength saving throw to avoid being restrained. Uh, 14 and a 6, so I'm guessing at least one of them. Uh, my DC is 15, so both of them are now restrained in the ground. All right. Oh, interesting. 
just okay and so you said they're restrained the yes restrained so they're okay. disadvantage on everything and advantage hit them speed yep. zero can attacks against the advantage their attack was a bit all right that's good to know they attack rolls at and, disadvantage and as an action they can make another saving throw to to get rid of and make a strength check okay all right uh that it the, that it okay so on uh the heavy's turn uh the heavy is going to use his movement to Actually, I think he's he's going to move up to not there, but he's going to sort of step on the, the corpse and peek around the corner and fire at your barrier, Penangalan. Mm -hmm. So your barrier is going to go down, but it will absorb some of this hit. Uh, but let's see what the damage is first. Okay, so your barrier is gone. Uh, if I remember uh, correctly, okay. it had yeah, six, hit six hit points. So that brings that down to 35. So you need to make a dexterity 14 saving throw for me. All right. Nope. So unfortunately right. you are going to take the full 35 damage, which I believe puts you at negative 20. Indeed it does. So Penangalan, uh, your barrier holds for just a split second, but then the explosion washes over you, knocking you unconscious. Yeah, and he just, like, crumples forward. And then the heavy to the south is going to get right about to there. I'm just checking who he can see. Uh, now there's a corner there. I think he can see Thorin. Let me check. Yeah, he can see Thorin. So, uh, hey, Thorin. No. You wanna, wanna roll me that uh, DC fourteen dexterity, please? Yeah. All oh. right. So you're gonna take half this damage. Oh. Nice. And a good thing too, because that is a grand total of twenty three damage. All right. That 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 hurts. Mm -hmm. So Juna, you hear the sound of two missile launchers going off, and one of them brings down Pentagon, and the other sort of flies and you hear some Turian cursing but it is your turn I have uh, uh, assuming I can oh, as a hold on a second. Oh. Yeah, I was, I was just double protecting Juno was out of range of the missile blast yeah yeah they were uh, they were out of range uh, I'm assu assuming I can as a free action I'd like to contact uh, the Leonidas to be like We'll probably need medical even. Okay. And then... Go big or go home. He's been hit a good couple of times, the heavy over here. Let's see how much movement it costs. And Actually, take... I think he's only been hit once, this guy. Yeah, he's right. only been hit once. Alright. You missed with your initial shots. So what's the play here? I'm, I'm not panicking. You're panicking. <laughs> uh, all right. Two, four, action, uh, meta gel, pen golem. All right. Pen non -golem. Survey says, uh, yeah, pen golem, you come up with uh, 10 health. And yes, Thorin, you did trigger two encounters. <laughs> rolled, max, rolled max HP. <clears throat> rolled max heal nice. so that was 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 back down I see, that guy's oh, down and I'm and conscious I, before uh, my initiative comes up mm -hmm. bonus action tactical cloak alright let's not Last let's one. not get blasted by another missile Oran you have a uh, restrained centurion in front of you 
Okay. I will be um, committing the greatest sin in any role-playing game, and that is crossing the genres. Mm -hmm. I'm going to channel an inner Jedi. Okay. And use catapult. I'm going to pull one of the chair, use my biotics to force pull one of the chairs mm -hmm. from, from across the bridge and fling it at the chap that I'm staring that is currently in front of me. He needs to make a DC 12 dexterity save at disadvantage. Yeah, I was going to say he uh, he's not doing great here. Uh, 16. Oh, actually. damn wow. it. Oh, well, that's that, I guess. Um, yeah, so somehow, even though he's being restrained by BZ's uh, biotics. It, uh, um, he, you know, um, yeah, you can move the dex disadvantage. Yeah, so that's that's still a 16, yeah. though, unfortunately. So that's what it is. The, uh, okay. the chair that you fling at him, he's able to, like, just barely dodge out of the way in time. Fair enough. Um, other than that, yeah, that's pretty much my action. I'm quite happy standing here where he can't get to anyone else. And I am, it sounds like things are kicking off out there. And I'm glad to be not in direct line of fire. Fair. All right, uh, on the Centurion turn, uh, the one closest to BZ is just going to do that uh, strength saving throw to see if uh, he can get out of the restrained. Uh, he <clears> does <throat> not. And then the one that is uh, with Oron, he's brave enough that he's just going to open fire with his shotgun. Okay. Uh, with an eight, will not hit you. So, Penangalan, you are prone on the floor. Oh, joy. So, back up to standing. Mm -hmm. uh, so half movement which means he only gets to move one square mm -hmm. we'll move out of the line of sight of the heavy Okay. and then spend a medi gel to heal up alrighty as he's doing that Thorin okay so I've reloaded my gun you have <laughs> uh do Still have steady aim on him, so I ignore half and the three quarters cover. Mm -hmm. So I am going to take another shot at him. I recommend hitting. I, I hope I hit. Uh, blah. No, unfortunately Damn. not. So as a bonus, uh, well, first I'm going to move one, two, three. Oh, here. Uh, as a bonus action, since I'm, I may pick the sniper subclass, I can try and hide. Okay. So I'm going to try and hide. All right. And stuff. Yeah, you think you're being uh, pretty sneaky. think you've maybe disengaged for the moment. Yeah, hopefully he doesn't roll a above a 14 for a perception check. Well, that's the hope. <laughs> All right, BZ, what you got going on? I'm going to focus fire a bit. I'm going to my little field here a bit, and use Biotic Punch on the Centurion on the left. Okay. So I'm actually going to, like, you know, flavor it as, like, a fun little Chuck Norris roundhouse kick. All right. Oh, and that's going to be... A... No, I have advantage to hit him. You do indeed, which means that is a crit. That is nice. a crit. So he is also primed as well, so in that this is a detonation. Yeah, I was going to say, it does mean a detonation, which... Uh, this was a force, I believe, so he will yeah. take an additional 2d6 on top of everything you're about to roll. D8. Uh, would the 2d6 also be doubled from crit? Uh, no, uh, because the prime is a separate uh, effect, I think. So that is a total of 17 damage? 17, yeah. Okay. So no, you... Uh, no. you roundhouse kick him pretty well and uh, his tech armor immediately shatters into like splinters of holographic light and uh, he does take a heavy blow but uh, is very much still standing well very much alive because he's because he was hit well primed he is not he is prone mm -hmm. this is so. true he is prone hit him All right. with the axe hit him working on it and then what's going to happen is Heavy 1 is going to take the reload action. Heavy 2 is going to take the reload action, but is also going to move. 
Uh, let's have him move here, actually, so that he can see around the corner. I'm invisible. Huzzah. <laughs> Since he took an action, he can't do a perception check for me. Correct. Yes. <laughs> All right, Juna, it is your turn. I do uh, not like where that line of sight might. This guy's, he has, he, hey, does he look like he's been hit at all? Yeah, he definitely looks like he's been hit several times. Is he looking injured or fine? Shields up, etc. His shields are definitely not up. Right, do I go for it? No, I, I need a turn to recuperate still. Yeah, action, metagel, because that doesn't break tactical cloak. Okay. So you get seven back. And then bonus action, use the hide action to try and stealth to be quiet enough to maneuver. All right, I'd recommend not rolling a one here. All right, a 12. Oof. And then there's like nowhere safe to go. I'm getting pincer. That's my turn. All right. Or on. Right. Axe slash on the one that was, um, I, that was roundhouse kicked. Okay. Take it. And I roll with advantage this time. Yep. Yeah, oh, but even with um, advantage. Um, I can only really see one ally so saving face isn't really going to help in this case yes unfortunately i think somehow despite him being prone and grasped by gravity you find a way to miss uh okay the gravity field pulls your weapon a bit you weren't expecting it mm. i can second. see where you stop i can see where you stop being a pirate i try to find the right voice for my character <laughs> Yeah, nothing else really for me to do. So I'm just going to grumble a bit. All right. So the Centurions are both going to try and break free. Uh, one does. And the other one does. So they are both now free of the Damn. grasping effect. Damn. Don't they have disadvantage on those saves? No. No. That's, okay. A dexterity save they do. But not this one. Yeah, not, not the strength. So yeah, they are on their next turn going to start waylaying into you again. But that yeah, is their well, entire it was a nice turn. Reprieve. Pen and Gollin, what you got going on? Alrighty. Now that's not a bit of cover, that's just the spot in front of the control panel, right? Correct. Mm. Uh, still probably my best option. So. Need to get in the line of sight of that heavy. Okay. Uh... Ugh. Oh no, he's reloaded his thing, hasn't he? Yeah, he's got a missile launcher ready to go. <sighs> okay, now I I am going to do what has got. I'm going to do what's called a pro gamer move, mm -hmm. and use my action to dash. Okay. Right up into melee range with him, and just steer him down and say aggressively, try it. <laughs> roll me an intimidation <laughs> if you roll another one I swear 22, 22. Nice. All right. something will happen on his turn anything else uh nope that's the turn Okay, Thorin you did hide successfully which means your shields come back up Ooh. are they back to full yep nice um, okay. Slide of hand bonus reload. Please, 15. No. Damn it. Uh, one, two, three. Here we go. <laughs> Alrighty. BZ, what you got going on? Uh, I'm just gonna biotic punch the guy that hit last. That is not the one. I've... Yeah, twenty five is gonna hit. Five, 
five damage. Now, my, my other logic here is that I don't think rocket launchers have hit fire, so he may have disadvantage on any. Oh no, but he doesn't roll an attack roll for rockets, does he? No. Yeah. All right. Well, these I'll, I'll we'll just have to rely on the fact that he will catch himself in the blast radius if he fires point blank. Mm -hmm. So and BZ, you punch the guy, does a little bit of damage, sort of shrugs oh, yeah, it off I, though. I had a crane kick him. Um, I use my last use of barrier because I imagine that might come up again. Probably. So on the heavy's turn, uh, the one that uh, has had problems uh, with Juna and Pengalan. Hey Juna, guess where you are? Oh, you're invisible. I can't see you. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. So let me do distances here. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's Can't eight. Actually, I think he's going to go to here. And he's going to see the kerfluffle on the bridge. And he's going to see a opportunity for advancement. And he's going to fire at all four of you in there. Well, this will be fun. So, no Oron, BZ, and then the Centurions. I need dexterity throw saving throws from all of them. Uh, okay. They both save, so they're only going to take half. Oof. Dexterity. All right, so Jester, uh, BZ's oh, only taking half. McCall, you're taking the full blow. Yeehaw. And you are going to wow. only take 25. Oh. Uh, cool. I'm. That's fine. So a uh, missile blast sort of washes over the area, damaging pretty much everyone in some fashion. But uh, otherwise, you are uh, you're all still standing. It was probably a very weak missile, maybe a dud. And then as for the one that Penangolin is up in the face of, Penangolin, uh, the heavy just sort of goes uh, here and hands you the missile launcher. Which uh, is all, probably just stands there awkwardly then because he doesn't have hands. Yeah, he's like, okay, uh, I'm going to go this way. Bye. Go this way. And he runs just away. Just like drops it at my feet. Yeah, he just drops it at your feet and he runs away. Like, he's going to use okay. his full action to run away unless you're able to stop him. I mean... You do get an attack of opportunity. I do, but the thing is, if he's dropped his weapon and run away, and I shoot him, he's going to get desperate and try to pick it up again. So no, I'm just, just going to let him go. This is, this is, this is, this is you choose be Paragon or Renegade if you hit him when he surrendered or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I let him run away. Okay. Uh, you can take uh, two Paragon points for that. Well, thank you. All right, so that is the heavy's turn, and it is now Juna's turn. Uh, I get my shields back because I was successfully hit him. That you do. All right, so that guy's running. Is he? Well, he's still on the map, right? No, he has uh, absconded back to his shuttle. Oh, like, but he. I guess he used his action. The dash got out of the line of sight. I was going to shoot him when he was running. Yeah, he uh, he has run the hell away. All right, so there's Aww. this guy up here. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Hang on, that's like right up in his face. His shields are still up too. Is the thing. Alright, um, would I have advantage with being invisible on an attack? Uh, I will give you sneak attack damage. Okay. I will use my movement, go up to him, and activate my Omni Blade as I from, from invisibility jab at Alright, go ahead. 23 hey. will indeed hit. And since it's a melee, it ignores shields. Well, that's uh, very important because uh, with 22 damage, he nearly goes down. Like, just breathe on him just a little bit. Oh yeah, so I just, I, from the cloak, Juna just appears with the Omni Blade in his gut and just says, remember me. All righty. And then uh, bonus action. Well, no, that's all my movement. Sorry, I use I all my tactical at me. What? <laughs> yes, you're oh, a puppy. Dog. Hi. Uh, sorry, Spot. You you mentioned that. Do all melee attacks ignore shields? Yes, all melee attacks ignore shields. 
Oh, I forgot to be mentioning that when I make melee attacks. I will have to remember that. And then bonus action. I guess it's really the only thing. Yeah, I activate defense matrix, give myself plus two. All right, noted. And apologies for the dog. She, uh, as you can tell, she's being very impatient with me. Uh, so yeah, Oron, it is your turn. Okay. Well, I'm not much else for me to do at the moment. Oh. Oh, I mean, I've had good luck more or less with this attack type. I'm just going to continue doing it. I have another option if this fails, but one more try. Oh, yeah. Tw 21. Yeah, 21's definitely going to hit. Cool. All right, and that is actually... Stop. That is actually enough to bring him down. So he is uh, cleaved in two as uh, he falls to the deck plate. And uh, since I have a very impatient puppy yelling at me, uh, what we're going to say is the remaining centurion is going to surrender, as does the heavy, thus ending combat. Good puppy. Thank you, puppy. So, yeah, mm -hmm. what would you guys like to do with your captives? Uh, kill this one, because he fucking almost killed me with a missile. <laughs> All right, I would say you could do so, but you're going to take two renegade points for it. Yep. <clears throat> I'm going to say over comms, like, let's try and take a hostage if we can. I'm going to radio the Leonidas, and um, I'm going to radio the Leonidas. Yeah, and uh, answering is Exo Jensen. He says, this is Jensen here. We've, uh, seriously, stop it. Dude. <sighs> stop. Uh, she, uh, or Jensen says, yeah, we, uh, we found the target vessel. Uh, we have them currently uh, standing down and preparing for boarding action. Uh, how's it going on your end there? We've secured one captive. Black Suns. Blue Suns. Looks like one of their Blue Suns, one of their Centurions. As I'm saying, uh, Black Suns is Stone. Yes. Um, a manacle, disarm, <laughs> etc. Okay. Um, and then I am going to pull my inner doctor and see quickly ask who needs treatment i'm good how do you know first aid stoically i've been better i pull out a very well-worn medical kit and say i was in charge of slave health before i left my pi before i left my piracy group it is a passion of mine that proves useful uh. Anyways, um, right. uh, we're gonna that, probably do a sweep and like gather up all the weapons, uh, including those rocket launchers. Definitely. Yeah, I was kill mm. this guy and take his rocket launcher. Alrighty. So uh, we're gonna handle loot off screen because again, I got a very impatient dog pawing at me now. Uh, so I think that's where we're gonna end the session. Good job, you guys pulled through there. It was a little iffy there with the missile launchers, but. Managed just fine. Uh, as far as I'm aware, next week is good. So, uh, stream, uh, if you're stream. liking what you're seeing, we'll see these uh, gentlemen next week. But this is where I'm cutting off the stream. So, thank you so much for tuning in. Bye bye. Bye.